Hi, this is Jonathan Messenger, and welcome to the Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian. I'm here with my robot, Bebop. Say hi to everybody, Bebop. Hello, everyone. <laughs> what are you giggling about, Bebop? Nothing. <laughs> okay, I don't believe you, but anyway, we're here today to continue our story and see what's next in store for Finn Caspian and the rest of the crew of Explorer Troop 301. Actually, Bebop, does it seem cold in here to you today? A little. My feet are freezing. Let me just quickly put on my shoes. <laughs> Bebop! Ah, gross. <laughs> you got pranked. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Bebop has poured milk into my shoes, so I guess I'll be putting those aside to be cleaned, and you know what, Bebop? I think that was the last pair of shoes I had that you hadn't already pranked. Yeah, a lot of listener prank ideas were shoe-related. There was Gabriel from Madison, Wisconsin, who said to hide your slippers in the bathroom. There was a listener named Finn, who said to fill your slippers with water and put them in the freezer. <sighs> yep. Those are thawing out in the backyard right now. Then there was Henry from St. Louis, who had the idea for the milk. Thanks a ton, Henry. And then there was Doug from Austin, Texas, who said to make a volcano in your shoes and fill your closet with balls. Okay, I know that one pair of shoes blew up, so I'm guessing that's the volcano, but the closet? I'm glad you didn't do that one. Actually, you may not want to go into your room right now. Bebop! Okay, alright, well, I guess we can't do this episode right now, because I have to go get some new shoes. I hope they let me into the store in just my socks. So, let's just do this later, okay, Bebop? Fine by me. <laughs> I thought he'd never leave. Bebop Tales, Bebop Tales, Jonathan has wet feet and milky toenails. Bebop Tales, Bebop Tales, Bebop Tales. Welcome to this special edition of Bebop Tales. I was tired of waiting to do a full season, so I wanted to jump on and put out this special episode. Also, we're part of a collective of kids podcasters called Kids Listen. And all across those shows for the past couple of weeks, shows like Sparkle Stories, Book Power for Kids, Tumble, The Past and the Curious, Ear Snacks, and Book Club for Kids, we're all doing episodes related to the theme of family trees. Jonathan wasn't going to participate, so I'm jumping in to save the day, as usual. And since I received an email from listener Yuri asking if I had a brother and a question from a five-year-old May from North Carolina asking if I was even real, well, I never may. I can understand why you might think a robot is funny, intelligent, charming, emotionally mature, and hungry as I am may not be real. But it's important to remember that I'm not from this planet. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about my family tree. Should I do my Jonathan impression for this one? Nah, I guess so. All right, here it goes. Hi, I'm Jonathan Messingham. Uh, wait a second. Hi, I'm Hammer. Hi, I'm Hammer. Hammer, Hammer. Okay, wait, I got it, I got it. Hi, I'm Jonathan Messinghammer. Messinghammer. Uh-huh. All right, let's try it one more time. Hi, I'm Jonathan Messenger, but you can all call me Fluffy Butt. There we go. All right, let's do this. Bebop Tales special episode... The Bebop Family Tree. When Bebop was a young, beautiful, brilliant baby robot, his circuitry finely soldered and his battery burning as bright as the sun, he lived in a world nearly as brilliant as he was. You may remember that from Season 1. The genius roboticist Dr. Percolator had built him, along with many brothers and sisters, to live in the home peacefully, until the evil warlock Baron forced them all into battle, in which Bebop was, of course, the greatest hero to be sung about for all time. But what you may not know is that before Dr. Percolator built Bebop and his brothers and sisters, who took on Baron, he first made numerous prototype robots, as he honed his skills. In that way, we can understand a little bit more about Bebop, where he came from, 
and how he got so incredibly awesome by looking at his family tree. The first robot Dr. Percolator ever made, Bebop's great-grandfather, or Gigi as the other bots called him, was a very simple machine. Dr. Percolator loved birds, and so he made a bird-watching bot. It was a black box with two lights, one red, one green on its front, and two antenna on its back. Dr. Percolator placed it atop a shed so that its antenna could sense when a bird was nearby. If a bird flew into the backyard, the light shone green, and the bot said, Bird! Bird! Funny bird! If a squirrel came near the bird feeder, the robot yelled, Get out of here, squirrel! Take a hike, nut job! Those were pretty much the only words Gigi knew. Dr. Percolator then made dozens and dozens of robots. Robots that could fly, robots that could swim, robots that could talk, robots that could sing. The doctor made a strange series of bouncing robots, who one day all bounced away. This happened a lot with those early robots. Dr. Percolator had trouble developing their navigation systems, so a robot would fly off and never be seen again. One of Bebop's uncles, a robot that could dig named Robonails, once dug a tunnel in their backyard and he just kept digging and digging and digging until he was so deep he was never heard from again. After that generation came Bebop's, and when Bebop was made, he knew he was a little different. All of his generation seemed to be built to run and jump and perfect the art of lawn bowling, you know, all the sorts of things you need to defeat a warlock's army. Of course, they didn't know that back then. But Bebop did know that he was designed a little differently, and he had a hard time fitting in with the other robots at first. So he often spent time sitting in the backyard with his great-grandfather bot, watching the birds. One day, Bebop was staring at that hole in the ground that his uncle Robonails had dug many years ago and wondered why no one had ever gone down to find him. A little bored, a little curious, Bebop decided he was going to try. He picked up Gigi, who he thought would be happy to see his grandnephew again, and took him down into the tunnel with him. It was slow going at first. His uncle had dug a tunnel large enough for Bebop to stand up straight, but over the years it had collapsed in places, and it sloped down at a gentle angle. Bebop's great-grandpa was a little more nervous. Every time they encountered another creature down there, he freaked out. Bird! Bird, 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 bird! Those aren't birds, Gigi. They're moles, said Bebop. Birdie bird! No, no, those are rabbits, Gigi. It's okay. Not jobs, not jobbies. Those are just ants, Gigi. Let's just try to stay a little quiet. The tunnel seemed to go on forever, and Robo Nails was obviously a skilled digger. He burrowed through hard rock and packed strong tunnels in loose sand. After a while, the tunnel began to slope further and further down. Bebop began to worry that it was so steep he wouldn't be able to climb back out again, and he began to wonder if that's what had happened to Robo Nails in the first place. Eventually, they came down into an enormous cavern. Bebop's light could only illuminate the first 20 or so feet, but there was a dark pool of water that seemed to be covered in ice. Long stalactites hung from the ceiling like the claws of some sort of fossilized giant monster. There was a strange sound in the cavern, a sort of haunting moaning. Bebop tried to keep to the cavern's walls as he made his way around, lighting up the cavern bit by bit. The noise grew louder, but they couldn't see anything. Bebop stayed quiet, and so did Gigi. He must not have been picking up on anything alive. Who dares disturb my sleep? Said a voice, bouncing off the cavern walls. Who said that? Said Bebop. He began making his way back toward the cavern entrance. I will give you one chance to leave this cavern alive. Give me the password, or be forever trapped here in my home. Bebop readied himself. He tried to sound brave. Okay. Can I have a hint? No! but I will give you three guesses. Bebop scanned the cave, looking for a clue. What 
would a cave monster use for a password? He looked around and saw the rocks hanging from the ceiling again. Stalactite. No! Yelled the voice. And some of those stalactites fell from the ceiling, blocking part of the exit. Bebop thought harder and harder. Um, password? He guessed. Nope. Said the voice. And more rocks tumbled down so that now there was just barely enough room for Bebop to pass through from the cavern. Bebop thought and thought. What could the password be? The voice, growing impatient, began counting. Ten. Nine. Eight. Bebop scanned to the left, but there was just more rocks. Seven. Six. Five. He scanned to the right, but there was nothing there but the pond. He looked up and saw a bat hanging from the ceiling, and it swooped down from its perch. Four. Three. He looked down at the ground, and there, scratched onto the floor, was the word. Percolator. Two. One. The bat swooped down. The voice called out, Time's up! And Bebop knew it. There it was. That had to be the password. He looked up and smiled, waved the bat away, and confidently called out, Birdie! 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 Gigi yelled, sensing the bat nearby. Nope! What? No, that wasn't the answer. It's percolator. I know it. It's percolator. Too late! A final wave of boulders crashed to the ground, sealing the door and trapping Bebop and Gigi in the cavern. No! yelled Bebop. Why did you say that, Gigi? I had it. But Gigi was silent. Bebop turned around, and there, rising out of the pond, was a dark creature, covered in muck. Some sort of algae was dripping from its body. Bebop turned to the exit, looking for some crack in the wall of the rock where he could escape, but there was nothing. He turned back around, and the creature closed in. Gotcha! It yelled, and it rolled out of the pond. In Bebop's dim light, he could see now that it was a robot. Consider yourself prank, Grandpa. It was Robo Nails, Bebop's long lost uncle. And you too, young one, you're pranked. Wait, said Bebop. You were just waiting down here all this time to pull a prank? Yep. And how long have you been down here? Seventeen years, said Robo Nails swiping the muck off his body. Completely worth it. Yeah, but what do we do now? Said Bebop. We're all trapped in here. Ah, oh, man. I got the way out over there. Said Robo Nails. Oh, man, you should have seen the look on your face, young one. Priceless. And Grandpa over there? Birdie, birdie. Said Robo Nails, laughing as he led them into a different tunnel. Good job said Gigi, as they followed him up and out of the cavern. Bebop Tales, Bebop Tales, got pranked by my uncle Robo Nails. Bebop Tales, Bebop Tales, Bebop Tales. All right, so that's a little bit about my family tree. If you want to hear more episodes related to the theme of family trees, check out the show notes here where I put a link into some of those episodes. Again, they're made by our friends at Ear Snacks, Book Power for Kids, Tumble, The Past and the Curious, Ear Snacks, and Book Club for Kids. Jonathan will be back on Wednesday with a new episode and new shoes. Thanks, everybody. Bebop out. Bebop out.